goes to some place and you wonder why in the world you're there in the first place. Mm. Oh, yeah. I know, I know we got a small crowd here, but that's going to kind of address that a little bit tonight. Okay. And uh, you would turn with me to Ezekiel chapter 37. It's not nothing new. But well, there's nothing new under the sun. That's right. I saw him clear. scare you. I only got six points. Amen. Amen. <laughs> six points. Yes. All right. Anyway, verse number one, it says, the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. Mm. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for what you, you were doing here and the things that you're uh, about to do, dear Lord, we know that you're still on the throne. We know you still have control of everything. And dear Lord, we're asking that you let us see through Ezekiel here that uh, the things that you want us to see today, and we will ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. As as we're looking at this, we're going to be. Uh, I want to kind of zero in on verse number one because it has something that we. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm going to be a midget here in a minute. Anyway, I feel like I'm in my brother-in-law's pulpit. <laughs> it was short, she said. Anyway, uh, if you notice in verse number one, it starts out with the hand of the Lord. Yeah. The hand of the Lord. And I, I'm, I entitled this, The Mighty Army of God. Mm. Mighty army of God. You say, well, huh, where are you going to get the mighty army of God here? Well, we'll get to that, but uh, I have a statement here. It says the mighty army of God always starts with the mighty hand of God. Mm. It's got to be in God's hand. Notice what it said. The hand of the Lord was upon me. Now, that doesn't mean he was shoving him down. That doesn't mean he was he was throwing him down. It means he had him in his hand. Yeah. That's exactly where we're at today. God has us in his hand. Yes, sir. He has us in his hand, but it, it doesn't stop there. He said, and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord. He carried me out in the spirit of the Lord. You say, well, well okay, that's, that's fine and dandy. But you notice... God didn't chunk him out. Yeah. God didn't throw him. God carried him. Yes. That's exactly what God does for us. He carries us everywhere we need to go. He carries us. He said, he carried me. And then the Spirit of the Lord directed me. Mm. You know, I, where, where we live, there's a bunch of different churches that we could have joined. That's right. There's a lot of them that, that's, that's out there. Yeah. But why here? Why out here in the middle of nowhere? No, why here? <laughs> because the hand of the Lord was upon me. Yeah. And he carried me out by the Spirit. He directed me by the Spirit of Almighty God. Yes, sir. And he directed me out. He gave, gave me the place. I got three things here. It says, God has a purpose for you being here. Mm. Now, yes, now, I know that's that's surprising, right? Well, I don't, I don't have it. No, you have a purpose being here. And God has a plan for us being here. Yeah. Yes, sir. If, you, if you survey everything around here, and you say, wow, we're right in the middle of everything. And why we don't have more people? That's not in our hands. Yeah. That's in God's hands. Yes, sir. 
even the things that go on in the government, all the things that's going on today, that's still in God's hand, yes, sir. not in our hand. So yep. we see that he, he carried he, he carried him out and he set him down. That's the first thing. That's your first note. He set him down. Mm. Notice he didn't throw him down. Man. He said, you, man, when you look at it and you see God's hand had him, God's hand carried him, God's hand set him down. He didn't throw him down. He just set him down. Yeah. Man, can you see that? See God's hand in this work here? Because God uh, set <coughs> Brother Adams down right here. Yeah. And he 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 gave the Spirit of God showed him this is where I want you to serve. And he did the same thing for us. Yes, sir. <laughs> you say, well, we don't have very many. That's not our problem. That's God's problem. Yeah. And God don't have problems. That's, That's right. God's got God's got it all figured out in his time. Yes, sir. It's going to always be in his time. But God has promises to us. Not only does God have purpose and God has a plan, but he's got purpose for us. And that and and, and you can see the promises of God. Yes, sir. Right here. Preacher was talking about some of the promises this morning. Here's, here's one of the promises he didn't get onto. It, it was John chapter 12, verse number 32. John 12, 32. This is Jesus speaking. I mean, if you want you want promises, you might as well take it from Jesus Christ himself. Yeah. Amen. 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 And he said, and if I, and if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men. Unto me, that's a promise. You know what our problem is? We lift up Sunday school. We lift up these things for the kids. We lift up. We stopped lifting up Jesus Christ. Mm, that's good. Hey, if it, we're not going to be popular lifting up Jesus Christ. That's right. But we're going to be doing what the Bible says to do. Yes, sir. So the first thing was he set me down. Next thing. It's in verse number two. He's, uh, we're going to see Ezekiel as he surveys the opportunities. Mm. Look at all the opportunities he had. So he said, and he caused me to pass by them round about, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. Look at the opportunities. Hey, we, we can go out. Stand in the parking lot and you can just see housetop after housetop any which way you want to look. Yeah. We're surveying the opportunities, but they're very dry. And they're very dead. And they're very problem is that's not that's not for us to say. That's for God. God has a purpose for us being here. Notice this, he said, he surveyed it, but uh I want to see three berries there. There was a very big nudge. You ever been nudged? Or somebody just kind of give you a little nudge? Huh? Mm -hmm. When it says, and calls me to pass by. Hey, God's mighty hand that had, well, I was in his hand and he carried me and he set me down. Now he gives me a little nudge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He gives you a nudge. Hey, I want you to go out there and look at everything that I've got for you out here. Notice he was in the valley. If you go back a chapter or so, you're going to find out he's been talking to the children of Israel, and he's, he was, I, I believe that God had him on a mountaintop. Mm. He come from a mountaintop experience. Everybody's been to Colorado, right? Mm -hmm. And you go up there and get, you get so high and the tree line stops. And, and yep. you, oh, it's beautiful up there. Yep. We took jeeps and we went up there like an idiot, we went up there <laughs> and we we looked at everything, and then we had this great thought: How are we gonna get back down? <laughs> but we, we we was looking at everything, and we were surveying the whole opportunities. Hey, you know what? There's nothing up there that grows. Yeah. You get up that high, 
nothing grows. Why doesn't God leave us on the mountaintop? Because nothing grows on the mountaintop. He has to take us off the mountaintop in his hand, and he places us down in the valley where everything grows. And I, I, can, I can see Ezekiel as he's saying, there ain't nothing going to grow here. Mm. There ain't nothing but bones here. These, uh, it's, it's been terrible. They said that there's probably a place where they had had a great battle and all these dead bodies and they're, they're, they're gone off. They were already, their bones were white. They were, they were just rotted away. You say, well, well uh, we can stand here and look out there and say, well, they're not going to listen. They're not going to listen. They, I mean, they're all dead. Hey, we were dead in trespasses and sins, were we not? Yes, sir. And God got a hold of our heart. But it's not, it was, it was not the preacher that got a hold of me. It was the Word of God yes, sir. that got a hold of me. Now, let's look at it. He surveys the opportunity. He said there was a very big nudge. There was very many of them, and they were very dry. Very dry. People don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. hey, people are moving in all the time into these neighborhoods, and you don't know the background that they had. You don't know that they might have been raised the same way that we we uh, preach around here, you yeah, know? That's true. Huh? The problem is, we try to say, hey, I've looked at the opportunities, there's not any. And that's exactly what Ezekiel did. Mm. And then, number three, in verse number three, <laughs> God asked the strangest question. Mm. Look at this question. Mm -hmm. And he said unto me, son of man, can these bones live? Then he gives it the ministerial Answer. And I answered, O oh Lord God, thou knowest. <laughs> Only you know, Lord. Well, that's true. Only he yeah. does know. But he's trying to show Ezekiel, you can know too. Yeah. That these bones can live. It's gonna get better than that. Wait a minute. <laughs> He has strange questions, but then in verse number four down through verse number six, see we're going to cover a lot of ground in that. But four through six, it's going to be the sermon that was commanded. Notice the sermon that was commanded. And again, he said unto me, prophesy unto these bones and say, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. The key is not about the bones. Yeah. The key is here. The word of the Lord. Yes, sir. That's where we go wrong. We, the people just don't want to hear it. But that does not mean we stop preaching it. Notice he said it prophesied to them. You need to preach to these folks. Preach to them bones. <laughs> oh, verse number five says, Thus saith the Lord God, These bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. I can see Ezekiel right now said, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Say, Lord, you're not seeing what I'm seeing. They, these bones are scattered all over everywhere. They, they ain't going to live again. God had him in the place where it has to be God that does it. Yes, sir. God has us in a place where it has to be God that does it. Yeah. And not us. Yeah. I've heard I don't know how many times. You've got to sell yourself to it. Uh -uh. I've got to preach the word of God. That's right. I just got to say, this is what the Bible says. And it's up to God to do the rest. It's not up to me. Yeah. See, we we, we want programs. So many programs. We've got this program, that program. And, and churches all over have got all these programs to get people in. You know what, what's going on? They're getting programs. They're getting people into programs. That's right. But they're not getting people saved That's right. because they don't hear the word of the Lord. Amen. That's the problem. They're not hearing the word of the Lord. Now, God commands him, says, I want you to preach to him. And he said in verse number six, and I will lay sin you upon you and will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and ye shall live 
and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Mm. Hey, you'll know that I am the Lord when I do this. Right now, Ezekiel's still saying in his mind, no, he ain't happening. It can't happen. How many times have we done that? We look at, we'll get up there on, on Sunday, and then on Sunday night, we'll look and say, huh, it's just the, the faithful ones that, that come on, on Sunday night. Can I tell you this? That's an encouragement. When somebody's faithful, that's an encouragement to the pastor. Yeah. yeah. But it's not just to the pastor. It's for everybody. It's an encouragement. Hey, this lady right here, she encourages me every time I see her get out of that car. Amen. No, amen. I mean, I might have a toe ache, you know, and I see her get out of the car. Yeah. Whoa. That's an encouragement to me. Yeah, yeah. Hey, how many times have you seen people? Now, this is probably getting off. Anyway, I'm telling you this. How many times have people been watching your house and they see your car go? They're, oh, they're going to church. Praise God. Amen. They know where you're going to be. Yeah. If anybody's going to break into your house, it ought to be when you're in church. Yeah. Because they know when you're gone. They can, they can predict you're going to be gone. Three days. I mean, three times. That's great. That's great, except for one problem. You have people that want to come on Sunday morning. Oh, I think it's going to make people mad. Well, I'll just make you mad. Come on now. They want to come on Sunday morning. But they don't want to come on Sunday night. And, you, and these same people hand you a track. Have you ever looked at our tracks out there? It gives you the service times on the track. And they're looking, they're going, well, wait a minute. There's not just a service on Sunday morning. Yes, sir. But that's the only time I see your car. Mm. No. That's right. That's the only time I see your car on the parking lot at that time. <coughs> mm. yeah. Are you mad yet? Wait a minute. Come on now. But I, I'm telling you, that's exactly what, where we're at. It's not just about Sunday morning. That's right. Hey, it's when the church meets together. This building is not the church. That's right. The church meets together three times in a week. Three times. Wow. Amen, preacher. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Don't amen. I amen myself. Because it's the truth. Hey, That's I right. want you to look. Hey, God sees things different than we do. Does he not? Yes, sir. We see it as empty, dread, dead, dry bones, and they're not going to do anything. And God doesn't see it. He sees a mighty army for him. He mm -hmm. sees a mighty army. Now, notice what happens. I want to get through this as quick as I can. Because I want to eat. <laughs> Seven through nine, it says, So I prophesied as I was commanded. Praise God. There we go. That's right. God, you know, God, it's your word. I'm gonna I'm gonna say what you want me to say. <laughs> That's good. Notice he said, he said, and, and he and he he preached to him. He said he, I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise. Mm -hmm. And behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. Mm. Now, you got to get the picture. This, this was a great battle, and, and now the, the animals have come in. They've been eating all these, this flesh, and they've scattered these bones everywhere. And there was a noise. Let me tell you. If I'd have been there, it'd have been a lot more noise. <laughs> Amen, brother. Amen. Yeah, there would, would have been a whole lot more shaking, too. That's right, me too. Because when he said it, bone came to his bone. In other words, this bone didn't join up over here, and, and, uh, and, and it wasn't the right place. No, it was to his own bone. Yeah. It, hey, can you imagine you're standing there and, oh, it, everything went. Ooh, what's going on? What's going on? Mm. That's you crazy. It's the word of God. 
and let God do the shaking. He has to shake us up sometime. He has to get a hold of our heart and shake us up. And that's exactly what's happening. Yeah. Uh, he's shaking. Right. Back. Woo, there's a whole lot of shaking going on. Mm, yeah. Come on now. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm telling you. Don't sing that song in your mind. <laughs> but this, this, this shaking. Here, here comes this, this hand. It's crawling across the ground. I can see it. It's going to join up with this arm over here. And then all of a sudden, this head comes rolling. Ah! It's almost touching it. <laughs> and they're all joined together. Notice God didn't say, I want you to get some super glue, and I want you to glue this people back together. Hey, that's what we try to do. Yeah. We try to glue them back together. We can't. It's got to be the Word of God, and He'll put them back together. That's right. right. Amen. Woo. And Amen. that's exactly what happened. He put them back together. Yes, He did. He put them back together. <laughs> and He said, and they said, and He said unto me, prophesy unto the wind. Now, He said, well, let's go back to eight. And when I beheld, lo, the sinew and the flesh mm. came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Have you ever had people come to this church? I have seen it in my ministry in my lifetime where people that have been in church for a long time, God finally saves their soul. Mm. Hey, I didn't say that they didn't teach a Sunday school class. I didn't say that they didn't sing specials. I didn't say, but God saved soul. Amen. He put, see, they they were, they had the breath. They looked good. Oh, they look like Christian. Whatever that is. They look like Christian. They acted like a Christian. But they were dead. Mm. They were still dead. Yes, sir. They needed the word of God preached to them. Yes, sir. And notice, he said, in verse number 9, Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say unto the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. Mm. Oh, he won't, hey, it's got all about the spirit of Almighty God yeah. coming in. That's what gives you life. That's what gets you going. Hey, it all starts with the Word of God. And it all started with the hand of God. And it's all in God's hand. Yes, sir. It's always in God's hand. Notice, he said, he said, uh, uh, what happens next, uh, we saw the shaking of the bones. You know what that is? That when it looks hopeless, that's when God steps in. Yeah. Mm. When Amen. it looks like, I've done all I can do, I can't do no more, that's when God steps in. Yes, sir. He said, oh, it's not hopeless. Hey, when it looks like nothing can happen, that's when God steps in. When you start seeing and you start understanding, it's in His hands. It's all in your hands, Lord. Yes, sir. I'm in your hands. The people here are in your hands. It's buildings in your hands. Mm -hmm. It's all in your hands. Notice in verse number 10, we'll see the sixth thing and we'll be through. He said, so I prophesied as I was commanded. I like that part. He said that twice. Yep. I prophesied as I was commanded. It didn't look like it could happen, right? But I went ahead and preached anyway. Huh? Mm -hmm. I, I went ahead and, 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 and invited somebody to church. I, I don't think it's not going to work, but I, I invited them to church. I, I, my, it, there's so many things we can do. And he said, I prophesied as I was commanded. God wants us to go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. Yeah. Hey, that's go. Hey, and invite, you can invite friends, you can invite neighbors. Right. Well, they might not come. They might not. They might not. But, they might. but, but that's they might. all up to God. Yeah. That's right. Hey, he said, he said, I, I did what I was supposed to do. I preached, I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came unto them, and they lived mm. and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Mm. Exceeding great 
army. Amen. That army was from God, from the hand of Almighty God. He built that army. Hey, we, it started with one man. Yes, sir. Doing what God said to do. And it ended up a mighty army. It looked like he was hopeless, but God stepped in. I want to tell you that uh, everybody's been down, the, been down to the Alamo, right? You've been to the Alamo, you've never been to the Alamo. That's, it, it, it'll do something for you. Go to the Alamo. Yeah. You go in there, and there, there's the guards. He's standing at the door, and he says, take your hat off. Mm -hmm. like they don't even tell you to do that in some of the churches. Mm -hmm. But you reverence the men that died yeah. there. But hey, they said that William Barrett Travis, when he was there at the Alamo, and they, they talk about that he drew the, the line in the sand. And he said, Who's going to stand? for truth, who's going to stand for the Texas, who's going to stand for it? who's going to stand I mean, they're outnumbered uh, 100 to 1 and who's going to stand so he draws that line and then men stepped over that line knowing hey, notice, he, he, I think he was saying exactly what uh, was said in the Word of God, says, is there not a cause? Yeah. That's right. Is there not a cause for us to take a stand? That's right. Is there not a cause? Here, here, they said, I believe he was telling them, is there not a cause? We want to see freedom here. We want to see, hey, but is there not a cause? Hey, when we go vote, that's taking a stand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's taking a stand. I didn't tell you who to vote for, so you can take that up with the conscience. But I'll tell you right now, you want to take a stand. And I believe you draw a line. Mm -hmm. You draw a line and you take a stand. Yeah. Hey, I think he was a cost. There was a cost involved. These men knew that they were going to die. Mm -hmm. They knew that they didn't have a chance, but they were going to take a stand anyway. Yeah. Hey, how many Christians today say, well, I ain't going to do that. <laughs> no way. No, we need to take a stand today. Amen. We need to draw that line and say, who's going to step across that line and take a stand? Mm. We need people today that will take a stand. Hey, and I believe there was a cry. For Christians, that cry would have been, remember the cross. Yeah. Hey, we've got a cry today, just like they had. Remember the Alamo. <laughs> Remember the cross. Yes, sir. And what Jesus Christ did for us. A mighty army was formed out of something that didn't look like it could ever live again. Mm. Hey, God set us here for a reason. It's not just a, oh, well. No, we're here to preach the gospel. We're here to preach, thus saith the Lord. And let God, in His hand, let God direct people here. Let God do something. It's not up to us. Amen. To it Amen. Well, amen. We, we got a job to do. Amen. Now let our light shine. That's a good way. Leave your driveway empty Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. Amen. That's a good way. Here's the thing that he hit on that got me, and that is our neighbors are watching us. Mm -hmm. And we say we go to church, and we say we're a Christian, but do we? Do they see that all the time? Yeah. Yeah, or do they see oh, you know, dry bones next door? They say one thing, and they do another thing. Mm. Yeah, that's good. That's good. And we can make all the excuses in the world that we want. Yes, sir. And I don't think God accepts excuses. No. Imagine if Jesus had made the excuse, you know, them nails going through my hands going to hurt. I don't think I want to do that. And he just said no. Mm. Yeah. There was a price paid. And man, those bones laying there paid a price. And 
so we've got to pay a price. Amen. And God will bless. Yep. I have, I mean, we know the history of our church, how we got here. We know we've seen God move. And, you know, I can say, yes, yeah, last days. Nobody's, and that's partial truth. But God's still God. Man. Sure. And God can put skin and sinew and breath and all that on old, dead, nasty, dry bones. Yes, sir. And He can put breath back in us, old, nasty, dry bones. Yes, yep. And we can, we can do it again. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. The only thing about that message I don't like is that I didn't think that's what each other. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Irving. Amen. That's better than telling us to get it. Yeah. Amen. No, he's still telling us. He's still telling, he's still telling us to get. To get. There you go. <laughs> just in another way. And so, but uh, just you know, think about your neighbors and think about folks you can give a track to, folks you can invite. There's still people out there. Yep. And you know, there's some that are going to say no. There's going some that are going to say other things you don't want to hear. Yeah. But you probably at one time said no. And then all of a sudden, here you are. Yep. So we don't know. God can do great things with dead bones. Yeah, yeah. He will. And so we just need to trust Him. But in His hands, He said, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Amen. You know, we can we can spend the month praying and talking about prayer, and the devil can shut the ACs down, trying to get everything uh, to discourage us. So we just keep moving to a little room, a little room, a little room. That's right. You have to go back to that little room back there, what else? God is good. Amen. All the time. Amen. And so we're going to have a word of prayer in closing, pray over the food, and we're going to fetch the food and bring it down here. But before I do that, let's get this. All the birthdays and anniversaries. Now, I listed everybody. I know some are, are, have lost loved ones and everything, but they still had anniversaries that we've celebrated, and they probably do something. So, yeah, you can go ahead and shut that off. They don't need to hear this. 